Well, welcome to the real world of doing uranium chemistry. You have to put lots of gloves on to protect yourself. Okay, so Dave has uh, some of this nitride compound in this little vial, which we've kept stored in the fridge freezer in the box just to make sure it's okay. And it's all under an atmosphere of nitrogen, dry nitrogen in this box to stop it going off because it reacts with water and oxygen, which is in the air that you and I breathe all the time. Uh, this is a paper we've just published and we're, we're pretty excited by this. So this is a, a uranium nitride which we've made and if you're wondering what on earth one of those is, it's a compound with uh, three bonds between uranium and nitrogen. And this is quite an important compound because it's taken literally decades to make one and it was really quite tricky but we, we got there in the end. So this has been published in uh, an American journal called Science which is published every week and it's a pretty good journal to get published in. Pretty good journal, that's, that's top of the pops, isn't it? Yeah it is. <laughs> well we have started with this uranium molecule just over here. This is a bit of a boring structure to show you so I thought I'd actually show you what it really looks like. It looks like this. <laughs> What I hope you can tell immediately when you look at this is this is a really massive molecule. You almost cannot see the uranium which is in this molecule and it's this green uh, sphere here. That represents the uranium atom. It's sat right in the middle of this structure and there's lots of shrubbery around the outside which is protecting that uranium centre and this was really important for making this nitride molecule because the important thing about the way these uh, groups are wrapping around the uranium is when you look from the top you can sort of see there's a pocket just coming in here and that means we can introduce a group but basically stop it doing any reactions with anything else in the vicinity. What we did is we, we took this uh, very simple molecule so this basically is just a little ball and stick model of what we'd call sodium azide and that's Na, N3, so three nitrogen atoms all in a, a row. And what's interesting about this molecule is if you eject two electrons into it, you break one of the bonds. I can just demonstrate that by pop, it's gone. And this fragment here, that bond then comes round and you've got your triple bond in nitrogen, so that's N2, which is a gas which is about 70% of the atmosphere we all breathe. So that just goes. And what that leaves behind is a nitrogen atom and a sodium. And this now carries a charge, so it's very reactive, so it wants to bind to something. And some of you may have been thinking, well, where did the electrons come from in the first place? Well, they came from the uranium in the middle of this structure. So which means now it's positively charged and this is negatively charged so they're going to stick together. So this nitrogen, and you can see this is just fiddly to do, will jump in there. Now in reality the sodium isn't here, it's sort of up here somewhere. But the key point is this is a very reactive nitrogen but it's got this sodium here to help stabilise everything when you make it so it kind of takes the sting out of the situation and just calms the nitrogen atom down quite a lot and means that you can isolate this molecule. But what we really wanted to do then was pull that sodium away uh, because then we'd get this nitrogen with a terminal linkage to the uranium and that's the thing that everybody had been cha uh, chasing for decades. So the, the way we did that is with a molecule called a crown ether. So it's just like a big circle going all the way around. And there's four oxygen atoms here shown in red. And this is what we call 12 crown 4 ether. And the four represents the fact that there's four oxygens in this molecule. And when you kind of put it on its side like this, you can kind of see how it looks a bit like a crown. This little sodium atom here, that's not really to scale for this crown here. So I've just mocked up a quick sodium cation which is sort of comparable to the scale of the crown but one of these crowns isn't enough on its own so we had to bring in a second crown to the equation and when you add two of these you can see how with one crown on the bottom and a sodium cation stuck in the middle and another crown on the top you end up with the sodium completely trapped 
by these two crown ether molecules. So that removes it completely away from the uranium. So those, those crowns came in almost like a claw and grabbed it away? Yeah, they just do a smash and grab and grab the sodium away and just keep it nice and happy because it's got lots of oxygen atoms bonded to it. So what you're left with now is our really massive compound with that nitrogen atom bonded to uranium. And the key point is because the nitrogen isn't bonded to anything else, and we know that nitrogen usually likes to make three bonds to other elements, all those three bonds are to the uranium. So that's a UN triple bond. So it's here, so this is the big deal. <coughs> yeah, so just those two atoms in that structure, they're the really important bit, but you need all of this other shrubbery to stabilise it because it's so reactive. So Steve, we've seen the paper, we've seen the molly mods, can you show me anything real? Absolutely, come this way. Hello. Okay, so this is uh, one of the labs where some of my group are. Uh, this is Dave, he's a PhD student. He's the guy that actually made this uranium nitride molecule. And exactly. now he's gonna show you actually it in the glove box. It's, it's a real kind of dark red color, uh, which is actually quite sensible because the, the uranium in this nitride it's what we would call in oxidation state five. And uranium compounds with that oxidation state tend to be very darkly and intensely colored, often red. That's the final molecule. So that's the, the massive ligand with uranium and nitrogen in the middle, and then the sodium with two 12 crown four ethers as discrete pairs in a crystal lattice. It's been a good three years trying to make this and a lot of hard work. And I'm just happy I made it now so I don't have to go through the process of making it again. <laughs> How do you know that what's in that powder is what you told me is in the powder? Because we've analysed it with a huge variety of techniques. Each one on its own would not be convincing, but when you bring them all together, it's absolutely incontrovertible that the formulation is correct. So that compound's been analysed by NMR, infrared spectrometry, We've burned it to get elemental percentages that are there in the molecule. We've looked at what's called electronic absorption spectroscopy. We've looked at the magnetic moment of the complex. And we've also, I said it reacts with water. When you add water, that nitrogen, which is the nitride, turns into ammonia. And we've captured that ammonia and measured how much of it we get to prove that that nitrogen really is a nitrogen. And then to go one step further, we've isotopically labelled it. So nitrogen would normally have a mass of 14. We've also incorporated the mass of 15 isotope of nitrogen in there to prove with various other techniques that probe the difference between the two isotopes that it really is a nitrogen. So also, we've done calculations to model the structure and understand where the electrons are. So when you put all those techniques together, you really do get a very good picture of what it is. Is that all? Yeah, that's all. Here's a question for you, Dave. How much do you reckon that powder's worth in money? Too much. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. Um, priceless. Honestly, couldn't tell you. What about the boss there? What do you reckon that's worth in money? I think it's priceless. 